Hi there guys, how's it going? Been a little while, that's the longest period I've had without video for the whole time I've done this channel to be honest, last two, two and a half years, however long it's been now. Um, it's good to be back out though. So as you probably know if you watched the last video I've been without my truck, it's been in the garage, took longer than expected. Still a few issues but I have it at the moment. <laughs> so um, yeah, I've managed to get out, come up here. Um, gonna do a uh, bit of a cook today, uh, gonna do some kebab, some lamb kebab, um, and uh, gonna try it and make uh, some pita breads as well. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna get a fire going, collect some wood, and um, make a start on that. I've had a load of storms come through while I've uh, not been able to get out and camp. So I suppose it's for the best really to have that in that period. It's been very windy and um, there's a lot of this dead wood and dead trees come down and stuff. So kindling is pretty easy to collect right now. I've got some birch bark that I've just collected, but it's a little damp, so I'm going to process down some fat wood I've got with me as well. So I'm just going to make some matchsticks and probably a few shavings. Just going to use a ferro rod today, I think. I was going to collect some dry grass, but it's a bit frosty this morning. So, uh, yeah, it's a little bit damp. Have a look in my tinder bundle. If I have got some jute twine, I still might do a bird's nest of flint and steel. But uh, otherwise, I've got the ferro rod. I think I've got a ferro rod. Well, as it turns out, I haven't got a ferro rod with me, I don't think, unless there's one in here, so I don't think I have a choice but to use flint and steel. do have um, some jute twine. Yep, and I have also got some char cloth. So I'm just going to break this down a little bit. Separate the uh, fibres out. And we'll use that to get our fire going. So 
So I'm just going to twist the opposite way to the weave, pull apart the uh, three strings, and then them can come apart as well. You can scrape them with your knife, you can twist them the opposite way and pull them apart. As long as there's a little bit more surface area there, it'll go. Well, I've got my jute twine tinder bundle. I've got some fatwood shavings in there, a little bit of char cloth to help it along. Got some birch bark, that's the dryer of it. These are my fatwood kind of matchsticks. Got some char cloth and my steel. Just get a sharp edge there on the flint. Oh. Spark dropped on that one anyway. <laughs> so I'm going to just do that on here on the fire lay. And uh, it appears we should be up and running. Nice and quick. So once that fat wood matchsticks have caught, they're gonna go for a little while. So I just put on some more of this birch bark, the damper stuff. And we can get our kindling on. Nice to do a fire in dryish conditions for a change. <laughs> Took my hiatus at the right time, I think. Nice cup of tea. <laughs> so I've just uh, gone and looked for a bit of a twig that's right and uh, still a bit green. Um, this is going to be for my kebab. Uh, I did have the idea of um, taking a part or limb off of a pine tree where you get the branches coming out around the exact same spot and then that could be the bottom of what I'm it's basically a hanger. That could be the bottom that the meat rests on. Um, but I'm going to go with something else because there's only really kind of dead and rotting kind of pine around or live stuff which I don't really want to be messing around with. Um, so I'm going to whittle this down so there's a bit of a stop. Um, put a notch in so I can hang it and have my meat on there next to the fire. So I'm going to give that a go. Right, so I've been whittling away. I would have liked more time really than I have today to do this. Um, it's quite small, 
got a fatter bit here at the bottom and then it's whittled down for the meat to sit on. There's a small notch there to tie off to and it goes to a point so I can get that meat on there. So I'm just going to notch here a little bit more and uh, then we'll get the meat on there. Right, so I nearly forgot I need to get this going. Um, this is some kind of bread flour, uh, salt, um, instant yeast and some nigella seeds which are also good onion seeds. Um, this is basically going to be a pita bread and I forgot I needed to give it some time to uh, rise so I'm just going to put a drop of oil in there. Should do. Should be enough for about three here and a little bit of water as well which I will slowly add. And I'll start off the mixing in the bag itself. Now just going to lightly oil this plate so our dough doesn't stick. I'll turn out our pita bread mix. Hopefully there's enough water in there, I didn't want to overdo it. Some bits are moister than others, so I'm just going to give this a knead. See if it comes together. If not, I'll have to add a little more water. I think we might actually be okay here. So I need to knead this for around five minutes. And then we'll get it proofing. My dough's come together. It's quite nice. I added a touch more water. Uh, went very sticky and then came together nicely. So I have to proof this for, well it's supposed to double in size so we'll, we'll see how well we can do. I've lightly oiled several billy can here. I'm just going to place that in there. Stick the lid on and put that close to the fire, not too close that it starts cooking but uh, close enough that it warms it. It looks like spring is finally here really. Um, some green coming back to the woodland here. Some nice sun and blue skies. I've uh, come back out just in the uh, nick of time really, just to catch it. The daffodils around, the snowdrops are pretty much gone now. Just adjusting the zebra billy. Yeah, so I hope to get up here in the week actually. Um, so we could have two consecutive videos hopefully. We shall see. Um, certainly need to do some stuff to camp, finish some jobs I started last time I was up here. Yeah, starting to look forward to the year ahead. So I hope you've all been good and well while I've uh, been away for the last, it's got to be three weeks almost, I guess, by the time this goes out. Um, quite a break. Uh, everything I'm doing here is, uh, <laughs> is new to me. This isn't something I've done before. It's not something I've tried out before doing a video on it. I just thought I'd give it a go, have some fun, um, try and keep it fresh. So uh, probably going to get the meat ready very shortly, so I'll show you that and uh, tell you how I've prepared that because I had to pre-prepare that. It's not something I could really do here because of the marinade and everything. So now comes the messy time and I'm not too sure how well this is going to work. So here I've got lamb. This is leg of lamb and I've uh, sliced it up in quite thin slices. Um, I've marinated it in some minced onion, uh, about half, a couple of garlic cloves that have um, been minced as well, uh, some diced up chilli pepper, uh, some salt pepper and um, a little oil, lemon juice and um, some cumin and coriander. So that's been marinating overnight, some bits are bigger than others. So yeah, we're just going to try and thread this on here and see how this goes. It does smell good. I want it to be quite tight on there, that's why I'm trying not to use the knife if possible. We're just going to build up a kebab. So I'm more or less there with this. And I'm just going to tie it off around the notch that I made. Make sure that's quite 
tight. It'd be a bit of a disaster if that came off halfway through. Using nylon bank line cordage here. Yeah, and I can hang that from the tripod. So I'm just going to trim that up with my open all, just so it's a bit more even, and get it hanging. Well, the birds certainly know it's spring. They're very active. I've just heard a woodpecker. I was going to see if I could get it on camera, but I don't know if it's going to go again now. So that's our pitta bread proofing here in the billy can. I'm just rotating every now and again so it doesn't get too hot. And our gyro or doner kebab, whatever you want to call it, is hanging. And I'm going to build up the fire so we've got the flames kind of next to it. And I'm being stalked by a pheasant. I can still hear that woodpecker. He's going quite slowly. I'll try and look for him in a minute. I'm just going to put a little oil on my plate again and a little on my hands also because my dough appears to have proved it might not be quite double in size but it's not too far off and I'm going to put this into three them into a rough pitta shape. And I can, if I want, use my water bottle as a bit of a rolling pin, which I probably should have oiled as well. There I've got three pittas already. They should be baked really, but I'm gonna try and do them in a pan on the grill. Hopefully that'll work out. Like I said, this is all experimentation today. So my aim here is to pretty much dry fry these. There goes the woodpecker if you heard it. <laughs> and try them one at a time. They've got a little oil on them anyway. I don't want to do it too quick as they're meant to be baked first. Right, let's turn this pitter over. See how we're doing. Ah. It's a good slow cook. That kebab seems to be coming along pretty well. It's uh, catching some of that smoke as well. That's the uh, pink you can see. Just turned the kebab upside down as it's fatter on the top there, which is now the bottom. Hopefully that'll uh, just make sure it's cooked through properly. I've left the knot on there just in case it does slide down, but it looks fine. I thought I'd just make some kind of dipping sauce. So I've got some yogurt here. Just put that in the cookser. Got a lemon. Just gonna use the juice of some of that. Woodpeckers off again. Got some mixed spice here. It's just um, cumin, coriander, paprika, little chili powder. Stick that in there too. And a 
our garlic. So it's not too much, so I'm just going to slice this up and mash it a bit. So I'm just going to mash that down with the back of the knife. A bit of salt helps break it down if you have it. That's good enough for today. And that's just going to get a bit of a mix. And that should be quite a nice, fresh dip. Okay, it's time to carve this kebab, which is probably a little tricky. Oh, that's beautiful. Obviously on a proper gyro donner type thing, you'd uh, be carving it off and leaving it on the fire. If there's a few of you at camp, you could have a big one of these going. If you don't have a little open all for a camp kitchen knife, you need to get one, they are brilliant for that job. Right, so let's try out our experimental pita bread. Feels to be uh, cooked through. Yeah. Ideally, in an oven it probably would have puffed open a bit more. But, uh, this will certainly do. There we go. You see all them nigella seeds in there. So just going to build this kebab with some of the meat. This isn't all of the meat. I just hung the rest back up for a bit. This smells brilliant. Oh, I may as well load it, hadn't I? I'm pretty hungry by this point. <laughs> just going to give it a little squeeze of lemon. Just going to load in a little bit of that dip. And it wouldn't be a kebab without a little chilli sauce, would it? A little bit of garnish. And we're golden. Well, here's the moment of truth. That is bloody lovely. The yogurt and the um, hot sauce really complement each other. The lamb is beautiful. You've got the crispy bits on the outside, the softer bits, the slow cooked in the middle. It's bloody excellent. Check that bad boy out. Definitely doing this again. Well, it's really turned out to be a beautiful day. There was frost this morning, but uh, the sun's out and it's, it's nice and warm in front of that fire. I was, I was starting to get a sweat on. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that was successful. I really enjoyed that, really nice food, nice day out. Hope you enjoyed it too. Do you think you'd uh, try something like that at camp? Maybe on a bigger scale for a few people, carve off as you go. It's just something I wanted to try. I was eating a kebab one night and I, I thought, I would like to do one of these in a bushcraft style. So I hope you enjoyed that and um, I should be out on a camp very soon so look out for that and uh, thanks for watching. I'll uh, see you again soon. Goodbye.